good morning, fourth graders. Welcome to our robotics class. This is week 18 and we are now in the third quarter. So we are starting completely from a new quarter. That means that you have a clean slate and please keep up with the assignments every week, okay? So as, if you remember back to the beginning of the year, my advice to you was choose one day a week and make it your robotics day. Maybe it's Wednesday afternoon, uh, maybe it's Saturday morning, and give yourself about 30 minutes or so to complete your assignment that you have for robotics class, okay? Um, and this is the best way to just keep up every week. So that way you're not getting to the end of the quarter and you're just like, oh my gosh, I did nothing. How in the world am I going to get all these assignments done in two days, right? And then you're so stressed out. So this is a good lesson because you guys now you're halfway through fourth grade. That means you're moving on to fifth grade. And I can tell you that fifth grade, sixth grade, it, it, there's a lot more work. And I'm not saying this to scare you or anything. I'm just telling you the reality of it is that the older you get, you, know, you do get more work. And it's because you have to learn how to manage your time. That means learning how to set a schedule during the week and say, okay, this is what I'm doing Monday after school. I go home, maybe you have a little snack, then you get all of your homework done, put in order the way that you do the homework. You do, you do your math first, your science, do you do your grammar, um, set up a schedule and stick to it. The, it's a proven fact. People who have schedules, they get a lot more done during the day. And people who just say, oh yeah, I'll just do that later, but they don't really set a specific time, chances are they're probably not going to do it later. Right. And we have so many hours in a day. And believe it or not, it may seem like, oh, but if I make a schedule, I won't have enough time. It's actually the opposite. When you make a schedule, you end up having more time because then you're, even if you have to set a timer, you know, for 30 minutes and you're just like, okay, I'm spending 30 minutes on this. And then maybe it goes a little bit longer. That's okay. But at least you're keeping yourself on some the sort of a schedule, right? And so that's really my best advice as you guys are starting to move on and get ready to move into fifth grade. Start learning how to manage your time now, okay? And challenge yourself, challenge yourself. And we're gonna be um, talking more about this, especially in technology class. So as we talk about um, digital media and how much you use, right? How much do you watch TV or play games or go on an app? We're gonna learn how you need to be managing your time with that. Because I know that for a lot of kids, even adults, it gets in the way of their lives too much. And they're just like, oh my gosh, I just spent four hours watching the show when I should have been doing my homework. And now I regret it because I'm stressed out. It's late, I'm tired. I don't feel like doing it anymore. Guys, learn now. It'll make, you'll thank yourself in the future. Trust me, you will. You'll be like, oh man, I am so glad I learned how to manage my time when I was in fourth grade and get all my things done um, because now I'm in seventh grade and I already know how to do that, right? Okay, so enough of that. Sorry, I like, I just like to tell you guys things because I, I just want to help you uh, because I know it can be stressful when you don't do that and then you have so many things and you just feel like you want to give up and then maybe some kids do give up because they feel like it's too overwhelming. All right, so let me tell you about our topic that we're moving on to in the third quarter. And so I have so many exciting projects that are coming up for you guys, but before, and these are hands-on. So what we're going to be moving into are some more hands-on engineering projects. So if you remember back in the first quarter, we did our first, or was it the second? I don't remember, I think it was the first one. We did the Wigglebot, right? And we made our first robot. And that was a lot of fun. Um, and so what we're going to be learning about now um, is engineers and the engineering design process. And why are we talking about this? Because robotics is a lot of fun and there are so many different parts of robotics, right? And so with coding, which uh, we've done with code.org um, in the past with you guys, we're learning how to talk the language, speak the language of the computer, right? And that's an important part of robotics because we do have to learn how to program or code our robot. But before we can do that, we actually need to build a robot. We need a physical robot, right? Before we can actually program or code something, we can't even think about that. 
So that's why we're going to go back to the beginning of what is the engineering process? What does that look like to actually design and build? And we're going to look at the job of an engineer, which is, believe it or not, there are a lot of jobs in the field of robotics. It's not just this one person that does everything. There are teams of people who work on robots at these companies. Um, even if you guys are interested, uh, Stony Brook University, which is out in Long Island, they have a really amazing robotics program. Um, a couple of years ago, we went with the seventh graders and we visited the college and we visited the robotics department and it was super cool. They let us go into the classroom. They let us see the lab and they were working on robots and they did a lesson with us. But the reason I'm telling you this is because the kids that, that are in that program, some of them are going into the engineering part where they're really, they're more interested in the design and building and all that stuff. And some of the kids are going into the programming part where they're just like, I, we wanna learn how to code and help the robot to do what it needs to do. But both of those people, they, they need each other, right? So they work on a team and they have a Stony Brook University robotics team which was really cool. And so we met a lot of the students and they told us what they were learning and, and um, what it was like to be in the program. And I wonder, gosh, I know it's COVID now, but it would be so fun to eventually go back there again for another field trip. Um, and maybe by the time you guys are in seventh grade, well, we sure hope that we're gonna be going on field trips by then. Um, but yeah, so that's a lot of fun. And so if, you're, if you are somebody who's interested in robotics, and maybe for you, you're like, gosh, I, you know, I really like the, the design part. I want to come up with how is it going to look, right? How is it going to move? And you really like that. Maybe you want to go into the engineering part of it. I don't know. But we're going to learn about some different types of engineers today. And I actually have a little video, which I think will help. Um, so instead of me just talking, you'll see a video and it'll help you guys to kind of bring it all together to understand what engineers really do and all the different types of engineers, right? And how it's growing. By the time you guys are moving out to get your first jobs, there'll be so many new engineering jobs because there'll be different fields. And so you'll learn about that in the video. But from the basics of it, um, what is an engineer? There's somebody who they think about a problem and they think how in the world can I solve this specific problem? And they figure out how to plan and design and build something um, that can help to solve a problem. So that's basically what they're doing. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put the video on and then after we watch the video, we'll come back and we'll kind of summarize and talk and, and kind of review what they were talking about. So let me put it on. get around from place to place without having to walk everywhere? How can we communicate with people who live far away? These were problems that people struggled with for a long time. Until recently, before there were things like cars and phones and computers. And you know who solved those problems? Engineers. But do you know what an engineer is? The short answer is that an engineer is someone who wants to know how and why things work. Now, I want to know how and why things work, but does that make me an engineer? Not quite. Besides being naturally curious, an engineer is a person who designs and builds things, like machines or systems or structures that help solve a specific problem. There's more than just one type of engineer, too. But no matter what type of engineer someone is, they have to ask themselves three very important questions when they're working. Number one, what is the problem that needs to be solved? And number two, who has the problem that needs to be solved? And most importantly, number three, why is this problem important to solve? Let's take a look at some examples. Hmm. A really famous example of engineering is the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, California. I mentioned that there are different kinds of engineers, and a civil engineer is someone who designs and constructs buildings, roads, and yep, bridges. For the person who designed the Golden Gate Bridge, 
What was the problem that they needed to solve? People couldn't travel in or out of San Francisco, which is surrounded on most sides by water, without a boat. Who had the problem? Residents of San Francisco, mostly, but really anybody traveling in the area. And why was the problem important to solve? Well, you didn't want a whole bunch of San Francisco residents trapped in San Francisco forever, even if it is a super cool city. Plus, you wanted people outside of San Francisco to be able to travel to the city easily if they needed to. So the Golden Gate Bridge was engineered as a solution to this problem. In addition to civil engineers, there are also mechanical, electrical, chemical, computer, nuclear, and software engineers, and the list goes on. Let's talk about what some of the other types of engineers do. First up, electrical engineers. Electrical engineers study electricity. They design electrical systems like circuits and computer chips. Think of an electrical object that you use pretty regularly. How about your microwave? What problem was the microwave a solution to? Cold food, right? You have an electrical engineer to thank for the ability to reheat that leftover pizza you just had for lunch. But while you might not have heard of Joseph Strauss or Percy Spencer, the engineers responsible for the Golden Gate Bridge and the microwave respectively, you've probably heard of Henry Ford. As in Ford cars? Henry Ford was a mechanical engineer, or someone working in the manufacturing industry, making mechanical things like tools, engines, and machines. Machines like cars. Ford didn't invent the automobile, but his Ford Motor Company made a lot of them. Them. His Model T car was famous for being affordable for plenty of Americans. Ford saw that lots of people who wanted to drive cars just couldn't because they couldn't afford the pricey vehicles that were for sale. So he engineered a cheaper model as a solution to this problem. His fellow engineers started to do the same, and now, well, cars are everywhere. Henry Ford's not the only big name engineer. A famous engineer around today is Marissa Mayer. Mayer is the president of the internet company Yahoo and is also a software engineer. Software engineers work on computers and other products that use software to write programs to make them faster and able to do more things. No matter what kind of engineer someone is, their job at its most basic level is problem solving. Each engineer just specializes in solving certain kinds of problems. While it might seem like there are too many types of engineers to keep track of, just wait 15 years, or 50, or 100, because we'll probably have a ton of different types to add to the list by then. Think about it. Over 100 years ago, we didn't have jobs in fields like aerospace engineering, where people design and construct planes and spacecraft. We didn't have planes like we do today, or need spaceships, so we didn't need people to engineer them. Who knows what machines or tools or everyday objects we'll have in the year 3015. Personally, I'm hoping for underwater cities. But whatever these things are, we'll need engineers to make them. So what do you say? Who wants to be an engineer? Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I feel like it was a good kind of introduction slash um, I guess, overview of what an engineer is. So let's move to the next slide. So just a review here. Um, what is an engineer? There's somebody who wants to know how and why things work. And there's somebody who designs and builds things to solve specific problems, right? So like how we saw in the video um, with the Golden Gate Bridge, the person, the engineer is like, hmm, what could we design and build to help people get across from one side to the other? And across the water. Um, with computers, I mean, it's so, oh my gosh, if you ever go into the app store, I mean, there's an app for everything, right? There's reminder apps that kids use for school. There's the grade app, right? There's so many apps out there and they're all trying to get people to say, okay, well, what problem can we help people solve with this app, right? And so th there's people thinking about these things and they're all engineers and they're trying to design and build things in different industries and in different spaces that people use every single day. Um, and so for some of you guys, if that's you, if you really enjoy learning how things work, you love just building things and designing things, um, that might be you. That might be a possible job for your future that you might really enjoy. Um, okay. so. I'm going to actually, okay, so let's review the types of engineers. So they mentioned a few in the video. There were civil engineers. So these are people that primarily they work in constructing things um, such as buildings, roads, bridges, right? Uh, they have to design and plan and come up with, okay, how is this building going to uh, you know, meet the needs of the people in the community? 
well, we needed to have some stores at the bottom, maybe some apartments at the top for people to live in. Oh, and people here have a car, so we need parking garage, right? So they're designing and helping to build these types of structures, right? Um, with electrical engineers, these are people that are working more with electricity, right? So they're thinking about circuits and they're thinking about how can we use electricity to solve whatever the problem is. Um, and so they may work, they worked closely with the civil engineers. Maybe when, when they're designing a building, the electrical engineer comes in and says, hmm, how are we gonna design a system here? You know, we need lighting on every floor, we need this, we need that. And they have to come up with how that's going to work. And mechanical engineers, um, these people are working more with actually making tools and machines and engines and things um, that can be used to help people, to can be used for different jobs. Uh, software engineers, we probably hear about these a lot because we use so many apps and websites and games and things. And these are the people that actually write those programs. They come up with them, right? And they're just like, hmm, how can I make this program do this, right? Um, aerospace is super cool because when you think about it, they're designing and constructing planes and spacecraft and, and I th I'm trying to think, did you, I don't know if you guys came on the field trip when we went to the, um, the museum in Museum Row and we learned all about the planes. I don't know if you guys came to that one, but we, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was in Garden City and they had a big museum there that we went to. Uh, with it was with Mrs. Catapano and it was a lot of fun and we were able to go and they taught us all about these different airplanes and just the history behind it and some of the engineers that worked on them so I don't even know if it's open now but eventually um, you guys can be able to take a visit there um, and there there's just it's super cool to just hear the stories behind these engineers right how they're able to look at the world and they're able to see a need, see a problem and come up with design a solution, right? And that's my hope for you guys, right? Because I want you guys to think outside of the box with your futures and really just let God come in and give you ideas because he has ideas for you. Uh, maybe not everybody's going to be an engineer, but what I'm saying is that if you have this passion in your heart where you just love to think about those kind of things, you know, just pray and ask God, be like, you know, give me an idea, Lord. Like, what is it that the world needs? And maybe you're going to design an app or maybe you're going to design something um, and you're going to be an engineer, right? And so I just want you guys to start thinking about that. What does that look like um, in your life? It's great to be a consumer, somebody who always uses the things, but I think it's better to be a creator because then you get to influence what other people are using. And especially as Christians, we have to really ask ourselves, how can we be an influence in the places that God puts us? So for you guys, you know, um, you're going to be leaving the school one day and going into your first career. And you want to think, how can you be creating things in your career, in your job that will be influencing people for the gospel for good? right? And bringing goodness to the world, because that's really ultimately what we want. And there's Christians in every field out there, um, working at Google, working at all of these companies, working as engineers with computers, software, they're out there and God is using those people to bring good um, into the world, right? And that's what he wants to do with you guys, because he has an amazing plan for all of you. So I'm actually going to stop here because next week we're going to continue with the engineering design process, but your assignment tonight is really easy and short. So everybody should get this done. No problem. I'm going to share this Google doc with you. And it's just a review of what we just learned. What is an engineer? So type the answer, um, name three types of engineers. So you can type it there and then name one thing you use every day that was designed by an engineer. So go around, look in your house. Um, what do you use every day that was designed by an engineer? Um, and then you could just email that to me. Okay, so super simple assignment this week. 
I, it shouldn't take you longer than five minutes, I would say. And if you've already watched the lesson in the classroom, then you could set aside your robotics day and say, oh, I'm gonna spend 10 minutes typing up the assignment, sending it over and you're keeping up with your work. So see what I was talking about, time management. So guys, start off, set your second half of the school year, start it off on the right foot and keep yourself on track, okay? So you don't fall behind. Alrighty, guys, so enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time, all right? Have a great day. Bye.